We'll start with the San Francisco 49ers. Home game versus the Kansas City Chiefs. A chance to exercise some demons. A chance to to really kind of turn their season around in a way and, and really get themselves back on track, get some positive energy in the building, get their fans feeling good about this season. And unfortunately, they could not figure out Spags' defense. Brock Purdy has maybe his worst game as a pro. Three interceptions, a number of them coming in Kansas City's territory, uh, you know, with chances to score. One of them coming in the red zone. And he just looked off a lot of the game. Didn't have a great connection with the receivers. Obviously, losing Brandon Ayuk to potentially an ACL is, is just a devastating even thought for this team, dealing with a lot of chaos already. Uh, Debo Samuel had had a sickness, a, a virus of some kind that, that held him out of this game. Juwan Jennings still has, hasn't recovered from his hip injury, so they were down their top three receivers at – at a lot of the second half of this game. And for a good portion, they only had Brandon Ayuk. Um, you know, so they down to to their Ricky Purse Persall, who had a solid game, but it's his first game coming off the gunshot uh situation. And, you know, I think he played solid. Uh they tried to lean on Kittle and Jordan Mason got going in the second half. They start finding running lanes. And I thought the defense played good enough, good enough to win. If you hold Patrick Mahomes to what they were able to hold him to. They held him to to 154 yards passing, no touchdowns. It was the second fewest passing yards of his career. Uh, they got they picked him off twice. They tipped the pass, picked it off. Another pass. Uh, Diamador Lenore made a great play on a pass to to Xavier Worthy. Um, you would think they would win this game, but they allowed him to run the ball for 33 yards, which was the longest run of his career. Uh, on a play that I think they could have did it after five to eight yards, probably, you know, but I think he got on the sideline. Guys don't know if he's going to step out or he's going to keep going. He usually steps out. And, you know, that's that's a play where I'm sure the fans are like, come on, you got to keep playing hard. But it, you, after playing this game, as long as these guys have, as long as I have, it, it, it's a weird situation when when you're on the sideline. You know, it's not like. You, you can get penalized, you can get fined, you run o- all the way over there and you hit the guy as hard as you can to knock him out, it's not going to go well. And a lot of times he's going to go out and you got to slow your momentum so you don't you don't run into him unnecessarily. But that was a play that probably could have been stopped and end up being a, a, a factor in the game. Kareem Hunt ran the ball for 78 yards, two touchdowns, um, looked really good, ran behind his pads. I thought the defense did a good job stopping him at times. I know everybody wants to be upset at the defense. Why didn't the defense do this? Why didn't they do that? They played well enough to win. Um, when you hold Mahomes to these kind of numbers, when you cause the three and outs that they cause in the second half, get turnovers, give the offense the ball back. If you have any chance of winning that game, those are the stats you need to see when you when you're facing this team. But offensively, you can't turn the ball over three times at the quarterback position. Um, I'm sure Brock understands that. I'm sure he's going to be critical of himself. Watch this tape and really try to try to come up with answers because right now I can't tell if it's mental or physical um, because they just don't have the answers. And and they weren't on the same page. There was a miscommunication with Ronnie Bell um, where everybody wants to get on Ronnie Bell and say, hey, why, why? He, he, he messed it up again. You know, kudos to Brock for going to his press conference standing up and saying, hey, that one was on me. He ran a good route. I didn't throw a great ball. Got it. That's leadership. That's accountability. Understood, respected. Um, but right now, the Niners, again, I, like I said earlier in the season, it was concerning losing that game to the Arizona Cardinals because you you don't have that many mulligans to get, to give, and to, to, to use them on division opponents that, should not not easy wins because there's no such thing in the National Football League, but these are games that are winnable games and comfortably winnable games. Whether you're healthy or not, you have the better team and you have the superior team. You have to win those games. And when you don't, you want to see teams like this where you need your mulligans, where you could say, hey, this game can go either way. And if we lose, it's not going to knock our season off track. Now, in all honesty, San Francisco, the 49ers, they're, they've been here before. They've been here before. They've had this record, and they've ended up in the NFC Championship. So there's still hope for Niner faithful that this team will turn this season around. But 
it right now I'm really concerned because of the injury to BA, the uncertainty with Debo Samuel, um, the uncertainty with Juwan Jennings, the uncertainty with CMC. It's just so much. I think the defense is starting to find their way, starting to figure it out. Uh, I think Dre Greenlaw, give him a couple more weeks, maybe a month, and he'll be, be starting to work himself back into the fold. But I thought the defense played pretty well. I thought Malik Collins um, has been a phenomenal player this year. I thought Leonard Floyd and, and Nick Bosa had a good game. They both played hard, caused chaos, uh, wrecked havoc throughout that game. He Bosa was a part of the pressure that caused Diamador De- Lenore's interception. I thought he's played his best ball of his career. I look forward to him getting his payday. But the special teams continues to be an issue uh, every game, and 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 I just can't figure out why. You know, it just seems like guys aren't aren't focused. It's not a lot of attention to detail that these guys are putting forth. And these are simple things. These are things, yeah, I know everybody wants to say it's on the coach. It's on the coach. They, they coach these things. They coach lane integrity on punts. And you can coach it all you want. You can say, hey, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. You can drill it, drill it, drill it. If guys get in the game and they don't do what they're coached to do, I don't know what you you can do about it. You can say, fire the coordinator. I've never seen that work successfully and have a positive impact on the team. Guys got to play better. They got to execute better on punt return, punt return integrity. Lane integrity, you know, you keep half the guys on one side of the field, half the guys on the other side of the field, and some guys in the middle. The gunner, I mean, the the personal protector is up the middle, and there's a lane for everybody. Anytime you get half the team drifting one way, it's going to be an issue. And I think that's day one football. That's that's common sense football. I don't I don't really understand that. But they've had a number of injuries. They got guys playing that haven't played these positions before. So there's something to that. But on the other side. The Kansas City Chiefs just keep winning, and I don't know how. Patrick Mahomes is leading the league in interceptions, and it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because Spags and this defense, Chris Jones and, and, and McDuffie and Justin Reed, these guys just keep playing well. Um, Christian Roland Wallace had an interception. He was a free agent they found from USC. Like These aren't guys that are just high-drafted guys. They just have a good scouting department a good culture, a good team, great coaches who keep developing guys and keep putting guys in good positions to be successful. And they keep finding them. They keep finding these diamonds in the rough. And they're showing up and they're showing out. George Karloftis is having a really good season. Nick Bolton continues to show up, batting passes away, showing up in passing windows. I just, I I, I wonder when it's going to catch up to him, but I think we've been wondering that for a number of years. When is it going to catch up to the Kansas City Chiefs? When is it going to catch up? When is everybody going to catch up? Well, they're playing some of their worst football during this run, and they're 6-0. and So that, that should have the rest of the league very, very concerned. It has me concerned because I'm watching these games, and I'm, I'm looking, and I'm like, I don't see how they're pulling these games off. And it's against quality teams, good teams, bad teams, whatever you want to feel, but they're pulling these games off. They're winning, whether it's by one score, two scores. They, they beat – the San Francisco 49ers who came into the season uh, as one of the, the the NFC's top contenders, in my opinion, a team that they're going to meet in the Super Bowl. They beat them by 10 points when Patrick Mahomes probably plays one of the worst games of his career. The defense shows up. You got to give Spags, you got to give Andy Reid a ton of credit. They just know how to win. They know how to win on the road. They know how to win ugly. They know how to win in an elite way. There's, I, I don't really have a ton of answers for that. Um, I look forward to seeing how the 49ers play this Sunday night against the Dallas Cowboys, who, who are dealing with their own set of issues, uh, who, has, who have their own set of problems, and have consistently gotten beat by a lot of points and given up a lot of points at home. So, again, it's a good litmus test because the 49ers are going to have to put up a lot of points. And they're going to have to do what these other teams have have done and show that they're the elite team that we all know them to be or else it's that the the narrative is going to begin to shift and it's going to begin to change. And I hate for that to happen. The Kansas City Chiefs are at the Las Vegas Raiders. You know, that's, again, a nice competitive divisional game. Um, I'm sure that both teams are going to be up for that. Uh, These teams have a nice rivalry. They don't have a, a, a good liking to one another. And I think. Uh, That's going to be a better game than people expect. 